This is a review of the Luxman D-03X, or as I'm going to call it, the D3X, just for brevity's sake. Before I dive into the review, if you'd be kind enough to give me a like, and also if you could possibly press on the subscribe button, that'd be much appreciated. Just helps the channel move forward. But back to the review itself. So before we get to the sound tests for this Luxman D3X, let's take a closer look at the CD player itself. Welcome to this closer look section. And as you can see in front of you, we're looking at the Luxman D3X, or for the pedantic, the D-03X. It's a big, solid, heavy, well-made CD player that you're looking at here. When I say heavy, I mean 13.2 kilograms, and it spans 440 millimeters by 133 by 410 millimeters. This, folks, is a CD player that has presence. There are plenty of more expensive CD players out there which have a larger physical bulk. And yes, this particular model from Luxman is no shrinking violet. Now I know it's a cheaper model and I know it's contained in a half width chassis, but even so, just in terms of contrast, you can see by looking at this Lima Elements CD player, just how, well, relatively large, the D3X actually is. But while we are exchanging notes, let's look at something maybe a little bit more comparable, at least in size terms. The chassis of the 6000 CDT transports from Audio Lab that you can see on the top here is a chassis size that I would say is a little bit more contemporary, a little bit more common in the market today. This sort of full size chassis from Audio Lab, at least, I would say is more the norm. But again, you can see the relative size of the Luxman here. You can just see what you're getting for your three and a half thousand pounds. And that's how much the Luxman D3X actually costs. I personally see the meaty nature of the D3X as a sort of a throwback, or at least a Japanese company who likes to acknowledge its history in broad Japanese terms. Because let's not forget, back in the 70s, Japanese hi-fi took up an awful lot of acreage. Edmund Hillary may have bragged down his local pub about being the first person to scale the sheer faces of Everest, but this guy didn't have to do what we did, which was to scale the sheer aluminium faces of a Hitachi amplifier, or even a JVC cassette deck. They, my friends, they were challengers indeed. So as far as the Luxman's concerned, you get a lot of metal for your money. Now, while we're comparing and contrasting hardware from other companies against the Luxman, let's check out the remote control. I think it's probably the right time to do that. In terms of remote controls, the recent fad or designed fashion lent towards the slim fitting Svelte variety. So this example from Cambridge, the slim, rather tall remote control is typical of what I'm talking about. And this more modern CD remote control from Macintosh continues the styling. Even lower cost remote controls like this one from Lima is, again, in that sort of direction. Maybe not quite as svelte, but certainly tall and thin-ish. So trust Luxman to book the trend. Here we have a rather broad and meaty remote control. You can see how thick this remote control actually is. And as I say, it has that broad look. Now, I'm not a big fan of the tiny, tiny buttons here, I must admit. But then again, there's quite a few functions which have been squeezed onto this remote control. So I can sort of forgive it, kind of. This is a battery powered remote control and the batteries are hidden behind this slide out cover here. You'll need two AAA batteries to power this remote control. Now, as you can see here, we've got the usual CD transport controls and further up, we have familiar program and track select buttons. And up at the top, we have, again, some of the usual functions you normally see like program, random play. There's the lesser spotted phase inverter, which you don't often see and is not often used, I must admit. There's also a digital source option, which I'll get to later in the sound quality area. And there are two further functions of note, one being a dimmer, 
that has four levels of dim or brightness, depending on which way you're going. And the output from this window here can be turned off with this dimmer switch. At the bottom here is another little button here called zoom. And I'll show you what the zoom function does when I power on the D3X. Now the remote control has an eject button, but depending on your circumstances, it's not always to hand, especially when you need it. That's why I must say how happy I am to see the D3X's CD eject button here, isolated and placed higher up the front fascia. You can see it's really lifted above the transport controls here. A simple yet often frustrating design flaw on many other CD players. I don't know how many times I've had to install my reference CD players on a low shelf so that I'm bending in the listening room gloom, hunting for the eject button, which sits amongst a row of other identical buttons. So I end up pressing the play button again, which means I have to find the stop button and then find the eject button again. And well, you get the idea. This isolated eject button is both sensible and logical, I would say. I like to see the obvious power button, and that's what that is. It says operation here, but it's nothing medical. But I like to see the power button on the front there instead of hidden away at the rear and accessible via a rocker switch. Now, before we look around the rear of the Luxman, let's power this thing up and see the D3X in all its shining glory. Not a lot going on, hey. Partly the reason is the lights. What I need to do here is to reduce my studio lights. And what I'm gonna do is turn those off and then zoom in to firstly the power light here and also the output screen there. The lighting on the Luxman is pretty low key and that's something I like. I really don't like to be glared at by hi-fi when I'm sitting listening to music. It can be most distracting and very irritating. And I like the fact that Luxman here offers, as I say, pretty low key lighting. So I'm gonna zoom in just to prove this thing does actually work. Okay, so we are looking at the power button. Now, not an amazing sight to see, I know, but there is that tiny, tiny little light here. And what I'm gonna do is just to show you that this thing does power on successfully, I'm gonna turn the lights off and then we're gonna have a look and see just how shiny or otherwise that little light really is. So let's turn off some lights here. And you can see the camera desperately trying to adjust for the poor lighting. And once we turn this on, you can see the Luxman is now warming up and it's now ready to use. So let's flip over to the output window and see what we can see there. Now, once again, the power is off. And what I'll do, I'll just turn on the power. What you should see in, what well, just around here is the word operation. And basically, as I say, that's Luxman saying, the power's on, that's all it means. And then we should see some message saying that there's no disk in the machine. But let's see what we can see, turning on. And on the left, you can see the digital out report. Operation has now turned to no disk. And now you will see display off because the display is actually off. And what I mean by that is on the remote control, I actually selected off on the display. That's the fourth selectable level on the dimmer switch on the remote control. So even though the screen is switched off, if you do actually do something to the CD player, it will report that you've done something. Incidentally, if you see a little bit of flickering, that's nothing to do with the CD player. That's to do with my camera's refresh rate. So ignore that. I don't see any flickering here when I'm actually looking at the CD player in person. Okay, let's open the drawer and you'll see a report of that open. Then I will place the disc on the drawer, close that and it should tell me, there we go. Loading the CD into the CD player and it'll tell me 11 tracks, just over 38 minutes. And off goes the display because, hey, that's the default mode at this moment. So if I reach for the dimmer switch on the remote control, that's maximum power now. As I say, ignore this flickering. This is just the camera. It's the camera's fault. It's nothing to do with the CD player. And again, we can lower the dimmer light just a little bit here and a little bit more. And there we go. Display is off and back again. And once we start playing the CD player, 
away it goes. And you can change track as per normal. And you can also fast forward and fast reverse. Nothing unusual, but it's nice to see it happening, I suppose. Now let's quickly see the tray in action, and I'll move my camera to a more look down point of view so you can better see the tray in and out of the player. So we've got a more three quarter view. Now on the Luxman, you can just see the mains cable for the CD player on the left there. And I'm reaching for the remote control, pressing the eject button. You can see a CD in place, and back again. Very nice, very smooth, very easy to do, of course. So that's basically the front fascia of the Luxman. Let's twist this thing around and see what we've got on the back. Now on the rear here, we can see the power cable. We can also see a pair of digital outs, optical and coax. And there's a digital in section here with USB, optical, and coax as well. Inside the chassis, which obviously you can't see, there's a pair of Texas Instruments PCM1975 chips in there, and that can handle PCM, but also DSD and MQA. And you can see the little logo here. The USB port can handle 32-bit 384 kilohertz, while the optical and the coax can handle 24-bit 192. Now over on the left here, we can see a quadrant of outputs. At the top, there's a pair of single-ended outs. And just underneath there, we can see a pair of balanced outputs too. Oh, and there is one thing I neglected to show you when we were around the front, and that was the zoom function. I did promise to show you that, didn't I? So let's spin the Luxman around one final time, and let me just quickly show you what that is. And we're around the front again of the Luxman, and I've turned all the lights off again so you can properly see the output window. And one thing I'd forgotten is that I had already pressed the zoom button on the remote control. So earlier on, you saw the zoomed in display showing 11 tracks. But here, in the default rather smaller size, you can see the letters TRK, TRK for track, that is. Now, if I press the zoom button in, there we go. Now, I see this as an accessibility feature for people who have sight issues. I mean, for example, on a relatively minor level, because I wear glasses, if I take my glasses off, this display will turn into a muddy mush if I stand a few paces away from this output window. Whereas if I press the zoom button, I can see it much further away, which is great. Not that I'll be not using my glasses, but I did that test just to see. Now, if your sight is not A1, and maybe you have glasses and maybe you struggle a little bit even with glasses, then this particular zoom function will be of great use. And I applaud Luxman for actually addressing this issue. In fact, the hi-fi industry as a whole doesn't address accessibility issues in any way, shape or form, at least not in a proactive fashion. It might do accidentally. For example, some of the output windows you may see are of this size, but that is just a happenstance of the initial design. It's often not meant by the manufacturer for accessibility reasons. It's just, as I say, an accident. Whereas at least Luxman here is providing the option of the smaller or the larger output, which is great. I'd love to see more accessibility features on hi-fi products. After all, you see them all the time on desktops, laptops, and even mobile phones. There are accessibility features all over the place on these devices. So why not hi-fi? I'd like to see more care and thought in this direction. Thumbs up to Luxman for this feature. I think it's very useful. So that's the Luxman D03X, or the D3X as I like to call it. That's what it looks like. How does it sound? And for that, we will need to check out the sound quality tests. And welcome back to the sound tests for the Luxman D3X. We're going to begin with the Sundays, an indie band from 1990, UK based, and their album, Reading, Writing and Arithmetic on the Rough Trade label. This band had a female lead vocal, guitars, bass and drums, relatively high energy and presentation. There's enough space within the arrangements for 
plenty of space to reveal delicate details, and I began with the track Skin and Bones. And one of the reasons I chose this disc in the first place was for its early generational neutrality. I also played a little bit of the Genesis album on Charisma, Abacab, as a contrast, and riffled through the big and bold tracks on offer. So what does the Luxman D3X actually offer? We're looking at a price point, incidentally, of three and a half thousand pounds. It's a funny price point because it's obviously not your budget area. It's not your 500 to a thousand pound CD player. Hi-Fi users attracted to that price point may look at three and a half K as being rather too expensive, or they might say to themselves, well, I want to upgrade, that actually looks quite attractive, but is it worth it? Am I going to get the sonic benefits? I mean, there's quite a jump from, say, a, I don't know, a thousand pound CD player to three and a half thousand pounds. That's, that's quite a leap. So am I going to actually see the difference, the improvements? That's one type of customer. The other type of customer is the guy who wants to go straight to the high end. He wants to spend six, seven, eight thousand pounds on a CD player. He wants to go straight for CD Sonic Nirvana. So that would be his aim. If he then looked at three and a half thousand pounds for a CD player, he may wonder and say, well, is that going to give me enough? Am I just going to waste three and a half thousand pounds? Shouldn't I just go for the big cheese at say seven, eight thousand pounds and be done with it? Should I even bother with three and a half thousand pounds? So you can see this Luxman CD player is sort of in between. It's like stuck between a rock and a hard place. So there are two different customer types here who are scratching chins. Is the CD player actually worth it? The D3X has quite a task, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to review this particular machine. Now, as you've already found out in the Closer Look section, the Luxman D3X can be connected via single-ended or balanced mode. And I thought I would try the single-ended mode first, just to see how that reacted when comparing that to a slightly more cheaper, lower cost model. So I brought in my Lima Elements CD player, priced around 1,200 pounds, I think. There's a bit of a gap, obviously, in terms of price. So listening to the Lima, is the jump to three and a half thousand pounds actually worth it? On this Sunday's track, you could certainly hear what you were paying for. No problem. There was a lot more transparency over the entire soundstage here. The lead vocal was trimmer, slimmer, with a slightly detached aspect, which created an element of distance between her and the rest of the band. This allowed the emotion from her voice to be better translated. There was a slightly solid state aspect to the upper mids from the Luxman, a coolness and a sparse element that did help to push detail to the ear. That is, there was an extra twist of focus here, which meant that the female vocal offered a more exacting lyrical delivery. From the Genesis CD, the lead guitar was precise in its presentation, as was the treble. Cymbal hits were sharp and lean, with a notable transient performance. What I mean by that is, cymbals started and stopped with a real precision. There was no smearing of the mids here, no mid-range skidding or bass flab. The Luxman's solid state air gave the music a strict frequency discipline that kept each instrument in order and behaving properly. So a good start then, but I wondered, okay, that's your single-ended mode. That's what it sounds like in single-ended mode. Would the Luxman sound any different if I plugged in a set of balanced cables instead? So I took my interconnect out, my phono leads out, and I put in a set of balanced leads at the back instead and connected those. Playing the Sundays again via balanced connections, I was suddenly glad I'd bought a ticket for this particular performance, because the presentation was richer, more complex, and deeper in terms of the soundstage image. To give you an example, in the chorus of this track, there's an odd thing around, what, five seconds of vocal double tracking? Just the five. It never really happens again elsewhere on the track. Just within five seconds, 
of the chorus. In the single-ended mode, this effect can be heard, which is a good thing, but the effect is pretty flat, in relative terms at least, lacking in a little bit of emotion. In balanced mode, the double tracking flies off the rear of the vocal and moves back into the soundstage and also adds a delicate reverb. And that's the thing with the D3X in balanced mode. The soundstage is enlarged. There's more space for reverb to move around, more space for air to drift in between instruments, allowing the ear to pick up detail on the edges. That is, there's a greater definition from the beginning and the ending of notes. In short, despite the performance highlights from single-ended mode on the D3X, when compared to balanced play, single-ended resembled a 2D pencil sketch. In comparison, the balanced mode could be compared to a complex piece of 3D CGI. Next, I brought in my £8,000 worth of Macintosh CD and compared it to the Luxman. All of a sudden, the Luxman's looking pretty good value for money, a three and a half, hey. Now, yes, the Macintosh was more cultured and finessed in the mid-range with a superior bass character from the Genesis album. Although, even here, in single-ended mode, there was a slight light shining on the upper mids and the treble area, while in balanced mode, well, if anything, I preferred the tonal balance from the Luxman, while the 3D effect around the stereo image was just a little bit superior, I thought. Importantly, though, I wanted to throw some jazz at the D3X. Chaotic rock is all very well, but I wanted to see if it also produced the required accuracy demanded of Stompin' at the Savoy. This was from an album called Turn Up the Quiet from Jeff Keezer, a Columbia release from 1997. I was happy with this performance from the Luxman. Yes, there may not have been quite the low noise and precision that a truly high-end CD player might give you, but look, I'm being a bit picky, I suppose. There was more than enough information on offer here, with a resonance and reverberating upright bass providing a firm foundation, while the sax emanating from the right channel was suitably reedy and organic in nature. Meanwhile, Keyes' own piano provided a playful and focused rhythm support. Now, I wouldn't buy a Luxman CD player for the DAC. It wouldn't be seemly somehow, but hey, it's there and there to be used. So I wondered if the DAC might be a tad useful as an added tool when required. So I plugged in my laptop and push through a Sonny Rollins 24-bit 96K jazz piece called St. Thomas. And I was pleasantly surprised with the output on this one. Relatively low noise, clarity was surprisingly good, instrumental separation allowed lots of detail to spring forth, while bass, even here, was firm and sprightly. I would have no issues at all using Luxman's DAC for occasional digital use. The airy mids provided impressive insight. So what do I think of the Luxman D3X? Well, what the Luxman does well when compared to even high-end models like my Macintosh is to provide a firm user choice. So if you want a more solid state presentation with definite, accurate, exacting detail and a disciplined soundstage, then single-ended mode is your thing. If you want a more organic, richer, complex presentation with delicacy and elegance, around the upper frequencies, then buy the D3X and also grab yourself a pair of balanced cables. In that respect, you're given two CD players in one, and it's great to have such firm characters available. There's nothing wishy-washy about the Luxman. It offers definite sound attributes for both outputs. This is a good-looking, feature-packed, well-designed and quality-sounding CD player. And if you have three and a half big ones that are looking to turn digital in your back pocket, check out the Luxman. And that's me done for this review. Thank you very much for staying to the end of the video. And thank you too for your support, subscribing and likes. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Now, I would love to have your company on Tuesday because I'll be back with another video. And normally on Tuesdays, I would do CD reviews and vinyl reviews. But this time, 
Maybe not. It depends how fast I can get this particular one done. I'm still working on it. Hopefully it'll be there by Tuesday. But if I can, it'll be related to vinyl cleaning. A sort of buyer's guide. Buyer's guides are always involved. They always take a long time to do, folks. So that's why I'm not too sure. Hopefully it'll be there on Tuesday. If not, it'll be the following Tuesday, I guess. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, look out for Tuesday. It may be there. It's very exciting. Thank you very much for your company today. Hopefully I will see you on Tuesday. Until then, bye-bye for now.